Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining me today. My name is Bill Dow from Dow Publishing LLC. I am super excited about this review. I am actually um, going to talk to you today about a product to do a product review. I just published an article on Risky Project. Uh, Risky Project Professional actually. Great product tool. It's an add-on to MS Project and I'm super excited to show you. I hope you like my article, uh, but I'm going to show you the tool live. So let's jump into it. Okay, so what we have is a typical Microsoft project, right? So uh, we've done this a million times, and so let's create a very simple project, okay? And I'll show you how easy this is too. So let's just call it Risky uh, Review, Risky Project Review, let's call it. And we'll just do a simple five project task, ris Risky Project Review, okay? And we'll just create task one, task two, task three, task four, and task five, right? I always like to do an end task uh, so I can do my successors and predecessors, and that's always a zero day task. Okay, so let's link them all together. Okay, and let's say this one's five days, and this one's three days, and two days, and five days, and two days, okay? And we have to uh, an X, dent them there so we get the whole thing and we are good to go let's see link they're all linked together okay and we should be good why am I getting the why is that not calculated F9 there you go you just have to hit F9 I don't know why I have manual calc on but that's a little weird but that's okay we got it okay so then uh, typical project schedule, so I'm gonna add some resources. We won't go down the cost uh, thing right now, but uh, we'll add some resources, okay? And that's very really helpful. So there you go, a typical project schedule. Let's save that schedule. I think we're good to go there. Everyone's done a project schedule before. You guys have all seen that and love that. Okay, so let's jump into Risky Project, okay? So Risky Project, as you can see at the very top here, it is an add-on. And one of the first things I talk about in the uh, review um, is really running this Monte Carlo simulation, which is just an amazing um, uh, a part of this tool and something that I've been looking for and dying for, and I explain that a lot in the review. So what we wanna do is just based on durations, we wanna add our statistical distribution. Okay, again, go look that up, go Google it. There's lots of definitions. There's a lot of smart people that have uh, created that, um, that distribution process. And so what I wanna do is just really cover it at the highest level. Now, the first thing I want to show you is, is that you can actually apply statistical distribution at the individual task level. So you can give it the low duration, the high duration, and it will work this out. Now we're gonna do it for the whole project, but I, I specifically selected a task. You clearly wouldn't use Project N, but this is why it's a, uh, a demo and a review. Um, so we're gonna end that, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight the whole schedule, because we're gonna apply the statistical distribution, which really means applying the optimistic, pessimistic, most likely, to each of the tasks. So we'll do that again, we'll hit duration. So make sure you select the whole schedule so you're getting that statistical distribution values applied across the whole schedule, okay? So here it comes. And so what I like to do, and again, they've done a great job um, in, 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 in really documenting what you wanna do here, but I like to use like 50% for my low, um, so low duration around 50% for the base duration and then in the high duration I like to put that up at that 150 so you got a really great triangular distribution um, and so you press OK and literally it is going in in the background and it's applying optimistic pessimistic and most likely so once you do that I always like to hit save anytime I add data to a project hit save I hit the calculate button and what I've done across this very small project is, and we see that it's 17 days, but what I've done is I'm running the Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, I'm literally running that simulation and here are the results. So in this typical 17 day project, which you can see right here, when you run Monte Carlo simulation, 
you can see the current schedule with no risk is 17 days, exactly what the schedule says. Um, a low risk, right? So if we if low risk of the task finishing on time, it could actually finish on 14 days. 17 days is the, is the medium or the baseline and 19 days. Now listen, we're only dealing with a five schedule task, right? But look how great this tool is. It immediately creates this uh, Monte Carlo simulation for you. Now with this tool, you can actually drag across and you can say, hey, there's a 72% chance we're gonna finish on February 13th. 93% ch chance, and this is around the finish date. And again, you can do that same functionality, 65% it's gonna be 17 days, 77% it's gonna be 18 days, and so on and so on. So you literally can play with and really drive through what your, uh, what your Monte Carlo is gonna look like. So you can go in there and you can play with statistical distributions. Again, this is an amazing part of the tool. You can have a 200 line schedule, a 500 line schedule, and it's gonna apply that for you. Um, at any time where you want to readjust, you just hit that clean button and you can readjust your, uh, your lows and your highs and basically you can rerun that analysis. How is that? How awesome is that? I absolutely love that part of the tool and I think that's wonderful and I think you guys will value that as well. Okay guys, so what we want to do now is we want to look at the second most important part or the second most valuable part of this software product and it's the risk register and all the great things you can do around project risk okay so we just covered the monte carlo simulation we got some great results there we saw the 17 days and the 20 days and so on and so on great results there let's now jump into the risk register okay so you select risk register on the on the menu bar Okay, and if you've already got risk open, you can see that at the bottom of my screen, you've already got the risk open. It will either pop there or not pop there, but either or you can select it and you can jump back and forth. And that's really the nature of this tool. It allows you to go back and forth very easily. Okay, so here we are here. So let's do this. Let's uh, type in risk one. Okay, and what you do is you just basically click off of it. Now there's not a lot of great information on the risk, but clicking off that really kind of creates that risk. Okay, so then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to then jump into the details of the risk. Now let me stop you there. Have you ever seen that level of project uh, details or risk details within a project schedule? I think not. Um, there's again, I mentioned it in my article. There's a couple other tools out there, but this is a fabulous level of detail that you're actually going to store and be able to tie it to Project Risk. And I'm going to show you that right now. So it's a risk. It's open. Uh, it's there's the risk. You can put a description. I P I P T. Got to be able to spell. You can put objectives. You can put assumptions. Right, P T I L M. Not going to fill them all in. Now, remember that we tag some owners to those tasks, so we can make risk owners. So I'm going to be the owner of it, but I'm going to make Bob the actual manager of the risk. We'll do the cause. We can type in the cause again. Got to spell it. We can type in a trigger. Right, what's going to cause it? We can put some costs associated to it. Um, we can create response plans, right? So we'll say risk one response plan, right? For test project, we can say that. Um, we can say what the description is, or what, sorry, let's do what, what is the action, is the action plan, okay? So we can type all that in, okay? And so basically what we have is we have an amazing uh, level of detail on our project risk. Now, what I wanted to show you was a, a couple of these other scenarios here. So you can see the different things that you can track at the task and at the risk level, okay? And just pop around there, you can see these, wonderful. So when we press okay, we've got some good details on our risks, but this just even gets better. So we'll go in here and we'll create a risk too. Two, right and we'll call it open risk again so we'll click on that there's a second risk we'll take a risk three click over there we've got risk three so essentially what we have and of course we can double click on any of these and get all the details and fill all those details in but for this demo I just wanted to show you, you can create a risk log which is amazing now 
here is the fundamental thing that I absolutely love about this tool is this drag and drop wrist feature, okay? So what we have, okay, on the left-hand side, and I explained it in my article, what we have is we have our wrist register on the left and we have our project tasks on the right, okay? So if you select the risk, you literally drag it over to the appropriate task. So we're saying risk two or task two has this risk associated to it, okay? Risk one associated to it. Then what you do is you, tick, you um, create the outcome type. So say this will be a fixed delay, okay? And what you're gonna say is you've got, uh, there's a 50% chance of it occurring. So it'll pop up to 50 here, okay? And what would be the outcome? What's the impact of that? So 50% chance and it's say a 20 day slip, okay? So immediately now what we've done is we can say task two has got a risk assigned to it, okay? Now what we'll do is we'll grab another one and we'll drag and drop that over to task five. Again, outcome type. Let's just keep it uh, relative delay. We take the percentages or the chance of it occurring. Let's make that 80%. But look how easy this is. I'll make that 70%, okay? And let's what's the outcome or the delay here? And we'll just say it's 30%. Really doesn't matter. You've got to do this for yourself. Uh, but again, now what you're seeing is risk register and you're tying them to the tasks, okay? Absolutely love that. That is an amazing part of the tool, okay? Now, immediately what you're seeing, which is really fabulous is, and you can turn them on, you can turn them off, but you're literally seeing the risks on top of the risk register. And so say for example that that didn't fit right. So if, uh, risk two, it just is not, you really feel like it's a high risk, which is it's coming across as a low impact and high probability. You can actually get in there and you can adjust those. And that's the absolutely fabulous thing that you can do with this. Let's say we'll make this 90%. Press OK. And what it's going to do is it literally adjusts on the fly. How cool is that, right? So you've taken a shot here and you go, you know what? I kind of feel like it's a little bit more riskier. You can literally put that and get that on that risk matrix. I love that tool. I love that component of that. I think that's solid. I think that you're going to absolutely love that. Now, one of the things that you're not seeing here is risk three because you don't have to assign every risk to a task. You can, and that's the amazing functionality of the tool, but you don't actually have to assign that. And when you uh, don't assign it, it actually won't show up on your risk matrix. So you're gonna use this tool, definitely in this particular risk matrix, you're gonna use that for risks that are associated with your project tasks, which is absolutely an amazing component and something that I think we're just not doing well enough, and I document that in my article. Now, do you want to add that to your project status reports? You want to send that out? You literally right click over it and you save your chart to a file and you say JPEG, GIF, so on and so on. So it's immediately available to you, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop up really quickly and I just want to show you those two risks, which is really, really interesting. Now what you can see here is on the Gantt chart, you can see that there's a risk associated and which risk it is to this task and you can see it um, a risk associated to that task. So I've said many times before over my 30 year career, there are text people and there are graphics people. And I can't stress enough when you show the graphic side of things, um, the people that are graphics oriented, they're going to jump on this and they're going to look at this scan chart and go, oh, interesting. I see that there's risks attached to that. They, they highlight and they hover over it and they can see it's risk one, risk two, whatever the case may be. And of course, you can um, you, uh, obviously properly um, uh, document these risks, okay? So if we come back to this risk tab one more time, um, one of the other things that you can see very, very quickly is your mitigation, your response plans. Now we just made these up, of course. 
Um, but again, as you fill these in and you get all the good details around your project risk, you'd see that response plan. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to just pop back over to project for a second and we'll end there. Um, I can't do justice to all the amazing videos that um, um, the company's got on their website. I put that link. Um, I'll put it in the description notes down below. Um, I'll also, uh, I also have it in my article. I can't do justice. I love this tool. Any add-on project tool, I absolutely love this tool. So I strongly suggest at least you go check out their 30-day download. Um, it, you, will not, um, you will not regret it. Thank you very much. My name is Bill Dow, Dow Publishing LLC. Check out my other videos on my uh, YouTube site. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.